welcome back to another video. Today in this video we are going to be using the Derwent Ink Tense again and I have Botanicum by Maria Trolle. Y'all know how much I love this book and y'all know how much I absolutely love my Derwent Ink Tense. <laughs> they are just so fun to color and create with. Recently, I did a couple videos on Derwent Ink Tents. One was a video where it was just a bunch of tips and tricks and different ways that you can use them and activate them. And the video following that was me showing you those different things in a coloring book. And I colored an adorable little frog. In this coloring book, if you've been watching my videos for a little while, you've probably seen that video. If not, I'll link it in the upper right hand corner. But we are going to continue on that page today and I thought it would be fun to to show you how I choose my colors and it's going to be especially fun in this book because in the back of this book it tells you the scientific name of every single flower, plant, leaf, animal. <laughs> And so it's really fun to be able to color in this book and really get an idea for what something really looks like in nature. I'm gonna show you in this video how I would use that glossary to decide what I'm gonna do on my coloring page so that you can bring it to life. If you check the description box down below, you'll find links down there to my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon. I also now have channel membership. You can find more information out about that by clicking the join button down below the video. So one of the first things I want to do in this video, because I think it'll be really helpful, but somebody asked me in my last video in the comments why I have my pages tabbed. And you can see that I have all these little tabs over here. They are these little post-it tabs. You can get them on Amazon for like $3. They're so super cheap. And I use them to hold my pages so that when I'm filming, I can just flip back and forth or on a particular page that I'm coloring if I want to be able to go back and just find that page right away. But what I use them for on this book is to actually go through and figure out the page numbers because of the glossary in the back. You can see that I've only tabbed a few, like this is page 29, page 43. And so I did a few so I could just start at that point. So if I wanted to, I could just go to page 29 and then I could just flip the rest of the pages, 30, 31, and then go through the book and figure out which page number it is. I could go a little bit further back here. I see that this one's 61, so I automatically know which page is 60. And this was also done with Derwent Ink Tense. That's another whole video tutorial. I'll link that one if you wanna see it because it is now the fall time, and I know that a lot of us want to color pumpkins, but that was so super fun. So here is the glossary in the back of the book, and you can see that it just has all the page numbers, but the page numbers are a little bit difficult to figure out if you're just sitting there counting every page, and that's why I put the tabs on there. But the page that we are working on today is page 68. So page 68 here, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce this, but the flower that we're going to be coloring is an iris. So it says iris cyber. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that is the scientific name. And I've already gone on Google and I typed it in up here. And so I went to images and I was just scrolling through to find some of my favorites. I absolutely love this one right here. I was looking for one that is a little bit closer up so that I can really be able to match up the colors. And I'm gonna show you how I do that, but I'm going to click on this one and save the image because I absolutely love that one. And some of them look like they could have possibly been photoshopped, so I'm trying to stay away from some of those. Here's another one that is really close up. I think I already did save that one, but this is a really good one because if you wanted to zoom in to really be able to see the colors after you saved it in your photos, you could really see the colors all in here. And this one is super, super cool because of all of the different colors that are in there, creating those greenish yellows with a little bit of white in there, and then the white out here with this beautiful, bright, vibrant purple and all of the highlights here and then this like burnt red color that's here on the outside but if you just scroll you will find tons of different ones and I was just looking for all of the ones that I could zoom in and it would be super close up you have some other options up here if you wanted to narrow it down more specifically it looks like there may be yellow ones as well but most of them are purple and any of the irises i've ever seen this one here that's yellow may be a much less common one you can color it really any color you want out of all of the different images you find i mean you can color it your own colors i just really wanted to use this video to show you exactly how you would do this using this book so this is the page we were coloring and we're going to color the iris here but i'm just going to use the google image 
image as a reference and see what I could come up with. When you're using a reference photo, it's great to use it just to get some ideas. It may not turn out looking exactly like your reference photo, but that is the whole fun in this. It really just helps you to start out with somewhat of a plan so that you know exactly where to start. It helps you to pick out some colors and put them together and just be able to form somewhat of an idea for any object you may have on your coloring page. Okay, so I have my swatch chart here and we are ready to start choosing our colors and matching them up to our Google image. This is not one of my swatch charts. This is just one I found very long ago before I started creating my own. I found it online, I just did a Google search but this one has 75 spaces and I really want one for 72 so I'm probably going to redo this, re-swatch them and then pretty soon hopefully I'll have a Derwent Ink Tense chart available in my Etsy shop in Color Family Order. So I decided this is the image that I want to work with and I just discovered something really really neat that I want to show you. Look how cool this is. You can just take just the flower here and hit copy and this is really going to help me because I can and see just the flower without the leaves in the background. But then I can go into my notes and I could tap here and I could put paste. Now I have just the flower, so I could leave it here and just really focus in on the flower to see where the colors are. But if I click on it, I could still zoom in and be able to see all of the colors. So we're gonna go ahead and match up these colors to the colors on the swatch chart. Looking at the swatch chart and comparing it to my flower, it looks like the colors we get in the Derwent Ink Tense set are going to be a little bit more vibrant than what is in the flower, but we're gonna match them up as close as we possibly can. I also have a scrap sheet of paper so that I could test my colors out. Let's go ahead and start matching these up and instantly I am gonna go to this fuchsia color here. I see a lot of that color in this flower and it looks like the edges are even lighter. I'm thinking that I'm going to need my white for this one as well to do a little bit of white on the edges or to even lighten that color up. So let me go ahead and grab the fuchsia. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other colors here. I want to be able to get a color for this purple that's right in here. And the closest that I'm going to find is possibly that violet or maybe the deep violet. I don't think the deep violet is bright enough. I don't know that there's a color that is exact. So we're just going to go with what we have. I think I'm going to do the deep violet. I think that one would be prettier with the fuchsia. So here's the fuchsia and then here's the deep violet. I think definitely that would make a really pretty combination. And don't ask me how I did that, but that black background is really going to make it so I can really see where the colors are laid. <laughs> is that not so cool? We're definitely going to need the white because there is a lot of white here on the outside and then some white here. And there's a whole lot of white in these areas here. And if we look at ours, we do have some that are standing up straighter here in this area on this iris but I'm really mostly concerned about the petals and making them look the way that they should. Let's go ahead and grab a yellow, and then we need something that is this color here on the outside as well. That yellow is sort of in between these two. I think it is more like the Sicilian yellow, so I'm gonna grab that one. I'm also going to grab the Sienna Gold here because it looks like it would be really pretty mixed in with the Sicilian yellow, and if I zoom this image in, I'll hold it a little bit closer, it looks like there is a mix of two different colors in there towards the outer edge where it sort of combines with that burnt red color. And now we need something that is going to match up to that burnt red. And so I'm gonna go down here and this looks almost perfect. I think a mix of possibly these two here. So the matter brown and the red oxide. I'm seeing a little bit of another color in here where we have the purples. And I'm thinking that maybe it would be best to add something else with that fuchsia. Maybe a little bit of this red violet. I think we're gonna go ahead and go with that. So now the next thing I like to do is I like to swatch them out just to make sure they're gonna look nice together. So I had the red violet to go with the fuchsia. So here's the red violet and the fuchsia. Those are super pretty together. This will be great to do a little bit of extra shading. So I zoomed you in a little bit closer so you could see what I'm doing here. And then I have deep violet for the inner edges. So that is this here. And I am going to have to wet these because they look very different once you wet them. I'm just trying to separate my colors out here. And then of course I had my white. We don't need to swatch that one. That's just going to be to add in some of those highlights in there. And now we have that area that looked a little bit yellow. And so I had the sienna gold along with the Sicilian yellow. 
And then for the part around that that looked a little bit red, I had the matter brown and the red oxide. So I'm gonna use the red oxide since it's lighter and I'm gonna lay these down here just the way that they looked and how they were surrounding that part of the petal. So I really wanna see what these colors are gonna look like once they have been activated because that is most important because they definitely change. Now when I'm using my Derwent Ink Tense, I wanna come from the lightest color outward into the darker colors and look how they change. And always make sure you have somewhere to brush your uh, brush off. And then I just want to blend these in just a little bit like this. I think that is the idea we're going for. And then I need to do this one here and let's test out this and see what it looks like. Oh, pretty. And then we'll test out this one here and I didn't go lightest to darkest, that's okay. We'll go back up into this here. And that is a really pretty blend of colors. So here's our flower, and here's the colors that I chose. So these colors here are for this part of the flower. This color here is for this area, and I think this is the closest we're gonna get to that part of the flower. And then over here is what we're using for these areas of the flower. They're a pretty good match. So that is how I choose my colors. I have all my colors laid out over here. And so we're gonna go ahead and start and see where this goes. <laughs> so I have my fuchsia and my red violet, and I'm just gonna start by laying this color here on the outer part of our flower and fill this entire area. And I wanna to try to get a couple layers down here so that once I activate the color, it really looks nice. Now all I'm doing here before I even activate the color is I just wanna lay my colors exactly where I want them. Now here on this outer part, I may have to come back later with a gel pen or something. Okay, so that was the fuchsia. Now I'm gonna come in with the red violet and I'm just going to add some of this color just to create a few shadows here. And then when I'm doing this, I do like to use the Google image just to get an idea of colors and such and where I should lay my shadows. But the coloring page is going to be just a little bit different. Like you can see here on the coloring page, that there are all, all these lines here, and I feel like that is where there should be a little bit more shadow to create that extra added depth. But if you remember, the reference photo did not have those lines on that image. When you're coloring, even if you're using a Google image, it is good to do a little bit of your own thing as well. And I'm probably in this video just going to have time to do this one petal here. And then I may have to do the other ones to speed or something at the end of the video. But I just really wanted to show y'all how you can do this so that y'all could do the same thing. Here is the Google image. And so we've done this outer part here. Now we need to come in a little bit closer to the center and we need to add a little bit of this color here, which was, I think it was our deep violet. And so I'm gonna put some of that in there and I'm not gonna cover all of it because I do want to have some of this white in here as well. I may go ahead and add the white. Let's see what we can come up with. I'm going to add this more so towards the outer edges. I'm definitely going to have to come back and possibly use a gel pen here. And I'm making sure that I still have space towards that intersection for my yellows and and the other colors that I chose. And I am trying to blend this color into the other colors that I used. I think the fuchsia should have come down just a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab that color and blend it right into the deep violet. And with the ink tense, you can always come back and layer another color right over the top after you've activated it. So let me make sure I add a little bit of white here in between. And when I activate this area here, I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful not to get rid of a lot of that. Now I wanna come right here to the bottom of the petal and I wanna make sure that I do this just as it looks here. And I'm wondering if I came down too low with the purple because you could see that the purple doesn't come down all that way. It just goes to right about here. Okay, so I'm just grabbing my eraser and I'm just taking some of that color right up. And see, so that just goes to show you, you never have to worry if you do something that you feel like was a mistake. But we're gonna come in here, we're gonna add some of this, the color that we chose for the much darker reds. And that was where we used the matter red with the red oxide. Okay, so the red oxide was our lighter color. So I'm gonna use a little bit more of this one here. Now I'm gonna come back and use the matter brown. And I'm gonna add a little bit of depth right in here where I've got this color. Okay, so that's a really nice blend of those two colors. 
And our last colors down here at the bottom were the Sicilian yellow and the Sienna gold. The Sienna gold was the darker one. So let's pull up our image one more time. And I think we're gonna use a lighter one and maybe the darker one to the very, very center here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go all over this with the Sicilian yellow. And now I have the Sienna gold and I'm just going to add a few shadows in here with this color. Oh, that's a pretty color. Okay, so all my colors are laid where I want them. So now we're gonna come back and we're gonna activate the colors. And I have my Derwent water brush. This is the number one. And then I also have the Derwent water brush. This is the number two. This is the one I used previously. But I have one, two, and there's also a three. I think the three is a really fat, fat one, which we're not gonna be able to use here. I'm wondering if maybe I should use the one, although let me go ahead and use the two because this one has a little bit of a pointier tip on it, so it may work a little bit better. Make sure you have a napkin with you so that you can wipe off your brush in between colors. But I'm gonna start with my lightest color here and I'm gonna start activating some of this into the darker color. And I've got some spaces here that are still white, so I'm gonna leave those alone because I want a highlighted area. And it's really important to use the white of the paper. And y'all, these pencils are literally like magic. If you don't have these already, <laughs> you are missing out. They are so fun. And I've got so many different colors here that I'm going really slow. Oh, look how pretty that is. And again, I wanna be really careful here because I wanna leave a lot of white there. Pull that color down just a little bit, but I still want some white there. Oh, look how pretty that is. And then maybe just brush this this way. And maybe I'll keep a few more white spaces that weren't even on the original picture and just sort of go with my own thing here. And like I said, it's great to use the Google images, but you do need to do a little bit of your own thing. Look how pretty, oh my gosh. The best part of the Derwent ink tents is when you activate them. They are just so fun. So I'm going over here over the lighter color first and then pulling it into the darker color. And then I wipe my brush and I go into the lighter color first, then right into that darker color, then wipe off again. And now let's pull down into where the purple is. And again, I'm being very, very careful. But now I'm gonna come over here and I am going to start from the lightest area where the yellow is and I'm gonna pull it outward and I'm gonna wipe my brush after I go over each separate area. I want to make sure that red is still there and then I'm sort of stopping when I get right to the edge because I have so many different colors here. Okay so we have all of our colors laid down where we want them and we have done the first activation. Now I'm going to start coming back with my colors and I'm doing an overlay to really create all that extra depth and dimension and make sure that I keep my colors separated into the areas where I want them. And I'm probably gonna have to come back with the white as well. And I may need, need to even add a Posca because I lost some of the white areas over here. So now I have my fuchsia and my red violet. And I'm gonna come over here and lay my second layer and try to create a little bit more depth on the outer portion of the petal. <music> how this white here looks so I may need to add a little bit more of that in with a Posca because I sort of lost some of it over here in this area but I love how the white looks so let's come back and activate this section and then we'll work on this section a little bit more back and I'm just adding a little bit more sienna gold here just to brighten these areas up just a little bit. And now I have the red oxide and the matter brown and we are going to define this area just a little bit more. I'm going to add back in some of this deep violet and I'm going to pull it into some of these other colors just to get a really nice blend. Now 
it's time to come back with my brush one more time. And I have the thinner brush now because I just want to blend out some of these areas. And it's a little more difficult for me to do that and not go into where I want to leave that white with the other brush. I'm just sort of pulling on the color and spreading it into the other colors. And that's just gonna help to get a really pretty blend of the colors. Now I'm gonna come into these areas here where I've got the browns and the reds. And I'm just gonna go over the darker area first. Then I'm wiping off my brush. And now I'm gonna go over the lighter areas. Pull it into those darker areas. Now I'm grabbing my white ink tents and I'm just going over some of these areas one more time just to add a little bit of highlight back in there and even just lighten it up a little bit. And then here I wanna blend some of these colors out to make the white areas look a little bit more natural. So I grabbed my yellow Posca and I don't think it's bright enough in here. So I think that I want to try to cover some of these lines and just put a little bit of the yellow Posca over this and this should brighten it up quite a bit more all through here and make it look really cool. And I always like to tap it with my fingers. And when I tap it with my fingers, I'm just spreading it out, moving it around just a little bit, and it really helps quite a bit. And after it dries a little bit more, I'll probably add some more down here. I think I want it all the way down to the end. I think that looks much better. And see, as you're coloring and you start doing things, even after you lay the colors down, you might do something you really don't care for. And there's always ways to go back and fix it to make things look the way that you want them to look. Okay, so I have my white Posca and I'm just going to add some more highlights in here. Okay, so I did go through and take my white Posca and I just added to the little dots that were already in the artwork around there to give it a little bit more of a highlight and I thought that was really pretty. I think it really made it pop just a little bit more. So here is the original image. So it looks pretty similar and like I said earlier you just want to use the Google image as a guide just to see where it will take you once you start coloring. And as I was coloring I decided to change things up a little bit. I would do something and then I really wouldn't care for it and so I would come back and I would try to fix it as you saw in the video I didn't like the colors that I chose here for the yellow part and it was quite a bit brighter so I just grabbed my yellow Posca and I went over it and I covered up the color so that it would be just a little bit brighter so I definitely don't want to leave this unfinished so now I'm going to finish off this iris and I'm gonna do it at speed and set it to music so y'all could see it all come together and as soon as it's done, I will come back and share my thoughts. So our iris is done. I couldn't leave it just doing the one petal. And I'm glad I finished it off because I really learned a lot as I continued to keep going. I actually learned how to lighten up the more intense colors of the Derwent Ink Tents. Because if you look here at this swatch chart and you look at all of the different violets or the reddish purples that we have to choose from or even the purples, we don't get anything that's really, really super light. So I really had to play with the white to be able to figure it out. So this video was a lot of fun for me to do and I learned a whole lot too. I think this video just goes to show you that you can use a reference photo to get ideas and form a plan and then apply some of those ideas to whatever the object is on your coloring page that you're coloring and then sort of just go from there and add your own ideas and it just really helps to get an idea implanted in your head 
and then just go with it. And as you continue to color, the ideas may change up a little bit. You'll take some ideas from your reference photo, apply them to the actual object on your coloring page, and in the end, hopefully you end up really loving what you created. So even in the beginning when I went and matched up the colors to the swatch chart, and I chose my yellows here, I had gone back and decided that I didn't like the yellows, after I had applied them and they weren't bright enough. So I just grabbed my trusty little Posca pen that was a much brighter yellow and I just went over all that area and I was able to create the look that I really, really wanted. So as you go along in your coloring and you feel like there's something you don't like, there's always a way to fix it. I came back with my eraser several times throughout the process of coloring this, changed some things just a little bit. If I used my white Posca, I came back several times and went over with my white ink Tense pencil just to sort of smooth those colors out and make them look a little bit more realistic and blended into one another. And then I came back here and I applied a few little dots just to add a little bit of reflection and some highlights and I really love the way that it turned out. So if you would like to see me finish this page or continue working on it in a next video, please let me know. Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.